welcome to nine on the positive side. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks so much for joining me this weekend. Now check this out in Washington DC. A piece of North Carolina has been on display for weeks for the country to see. We're talking about the Capitol Christmas tree. You see it right there. Governor Roy Cooper was there when the tree was lit. The red spruce tree is from the Pisgah National Forest. It stands 78 feet tall, and you might be wondering how the tree even got to our nation's capital. Well, it was quite the journey, as you can imagine, and one Surrey company in North Carolina had to embark on that journey too. Brad Jones takes us back. It ain't easy getting something this big down the road safely. It takes a lot of skill behind the wheel and some assistance from security vehicles to navigate all the twists and turns. Lots of uh, winding roads uh, in the North Carolina mountains to, to get her to where she is today. The U.S. Capitol Christmas tree is a precious load for the crew from Hardy Brothers. The Surrey County Trucking Company has the job of getting this huge tree from the Pisgah National Forest to the nation's capital. There are lots of stops along the way, including one pretty close to home for the Hardy Brothers in Mount Airy. We're here in our home county, Surrey County, and so it uh, uh, gives us great pride to share this with the residents of Surrey County. It not only gives everyone a chance to see the tree, they also get to be part of the experience by signing the covering that protects it going down the road. And it's always better when you see a lot of friends and family in the crowd. It's fantastic uh, to have the recognition and to, uh, to come for this area. It's great. Hardy Brothers started in 1963 as a farming operation. And within a few years, they had evolved into a long haul trucking company, running the length of the nation, taking dry goods out to the West Coast then loading up on fresh produce for the return trip. We try to make our trucks as comfortable as we can for the drivers because they lived in them, so to speak, for about five days each week. For this trip, they have a husband and wife in charge of the Christmas tree, Deb and Ed Higdon, and the whole experience has been an eye opener. At first, we thought we'd just drive it straight to Washington, but it's been the stops along the way and seeing the excitement of the people and uh, the turnout for these little towns that we've been in. It's been amazing and so fun for us. Go straight through, go straight through. Good job. Over a trip spanning two weeks, they've been rolling through towns almost like a continual parade. While a regular trailer is 53 feet long, this one is 80 feet. That's why it takes experience to navigate that huge load along a narrow two lane road. And that experience is something that Hardy Brothers likes to showcase because this company and these drivers are part of an industry that keeps America running. We love educating the general public about what trucks do. Um, and I was talking earlier this morning, um, uh, almost everything we touch on a daily basis was, has made its way to us by truck. In almost 60 years, Hardy Brothers has learned their best investment is their people. The drivers, along with the mechanics and the staff at their home base in the tiny community of Siloam, they've all got a stake in what might be their highest profile trip so far. Well, this is the people's tree. You know, we told somebody that the other day that, you know, was kind of poo-pooing it. We're like, no, it's the people's tree. It's your tree. It's my tree. It's, you know, so we're really excited. I think personally of Ruby as my baby. She's in a cradle. I'm getting her to Washington safely. And as we know, the tree got there safely, just like you saw. One of the most popular things to do around this time of year is look at Christmas lights. We have you covered with some of the places to do just that in eastern North Carolina and beyond in our state. All you have to do is go to our website, WNCT.com, and check out our 31 best days of Christmas. We've got a list of places you can check out and so much more, and it's all about the holiday season. And it is the season of giving in Eastern North Carolina. We've seen people from all over come together to make sure others have a good holiday, including one boy along the Crystal Coast. Tucker Rose collected cards to be hand delivered to the Kinston VA Hospital on Christmas morning for our veterans. It's an opportunity to let people know, hey, someone didn't forget about you. You know, I think that's the most important thing is making sure they know that someone thought enough of them. Makes me feel good. This is the third year he's been doing the Salute to Veterans card drive. A holiday tradition is all about helping those in need, and it's all thanks to a little help from Richard Reyes, or better known as Poncho Claus in Texas. Jason Miles shows us what he's doing to give back. Feliz Navidad, Houston! 
For the 40th year, the now 70-year-old Poncho Claus came through for families on Houston's East End. The character, a.k.a. Richard Reyes, once again visited apartment complexes and other areas along with a caravan of lowriders, brightening the holiday in a year not as cheerful for many. Reyes himself had to rely more heavily on community fundraising because there were no corporate sponsors for the first time ever. Poncho Claus has a list and he checks it twice, but we give to everybody whether they're naughty or nice. So, so grateful. So, so grateful. We've gone through some hard times and also a loss in the family recently, so he's done an amazing job. Reyes and his group plan multiple events throughout the holiday season, but it's the Christmas Day caravan that gets the most attention. And that was Jason Miles reporting for us for sale next. Why this house may bring you back to a childhood memory. There's unique display in Connecticut lighting up the nighttime sky. Families from all over come to see it, and it's probably because we aren't talking about a typical Christmas tree, but rather one that has a lot to do with fishermen and lobstermen. Eliza Krasinski reports. Yeah, take a look here at this stunning 35 foot tall tree. It's made completely out of lobster traps and buoys. Now there are 420 lobster traps on this tree and it was hand built by volunteers. I'm just amazed. Hundreds of lobster traps make up the tree. It smells like the ocean. Over 120 artists from Connecticut and Rhode Island hand painted the buoys and 40 were made by children. Each has an amazing story behind it. Every buoy tells a story, whether it's about a family, a memorial buoy, or a buoy recognizing a business or nonprofit organization. And as you walk around the tree, you get to learn about all those stories and businesses. Oh, I've gotten a close look. I mean, I like they got some kitties and some puppies, and it's just beautiful. My daughter likes the one by the door, the bee. Looks like a beehive. Inspired by the lobster trap tree in downtown Gloucester, Mass, with buoys painted by children in the community. I fell in love with it instantly and said, I live in Stonington, that's my hometown. We are the Connecticut's last commercial fishing village. We need a lobster trap tree in Stonington. Hundreds of families came out to see the tree, and for some, it feels like Christmas morning. So what do you want to be? Lobstermen. Why? Because I like lobstering. It's, it's one of the best fi fishermen's, it's a fishermen's dream. And the Mystic Aquarium joined everyone. They brought out a penguin, who's actually the oldest male penguin in any zoo in the United States. It's a wonderful experience. I'm glad we did it. We probably would come back and see it again before Christmas is over. It may just be one of Cleveland, Ohio's iconic homes, and guess what? It's for sale, and if you see yourself saying, I feel like I've actually seen this house before, you might have in a 1983 movie. Tina Bavenzi has more. 3159 West 11th Street is a Cleveland landmark known for the famous film, A Christmas Story. When you tell people about the movie and you realize that it's in Cleveland, they're all shocked and like, wow, that's awesome. Like, it is from Cleveland. Johnny Fatinas is a native Clevelander who now lives in Milwaukee. He's never visited the house until now. To learn it's for sale is a bit of a shock. I hope it stays the same and nothing ever happens to it. They keep it just like it is and whoever takes care of it, it takes care of it just like it is now. The campus is owned by Brian Jones, who has restored the 1.3 acre campus to movie level quality. Three buildings, a couple parking lots, uh, some vacant lots, and then, you know, like I said too, the entire operation that's behind everything also. Hoff and Lee real estate broker Chad Whitmer says the new listing doesn't have an asking price, but bids will be accepted. We expect a high level of interest and, uh, you know, we're excited about what's going to come from a pricing standpoint. Um, but, you know, again, we do expect it to be significant. For visitors like Donnie Tackett, the film is an essential part of Christmas. I've seen it in school for the first time back in 84 and it stays on in my house um, every Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. He understands the nature of how business works and just hopes it goes to someone who cares. And we would definitely love to see someone uh, buy it and just keep it the way it is. I'm sure it's a big attraction, especially around Christmas. Um, but would love to come up here again and bring my whole family.
that was Tina Bambezi reporting for us. If you have a story idea, we'd like to hear about it. Just send it over to us. We want to hear about all the good things happening where you live. Just email newsdesk at WNCT.com. Again, it's newsdesk at WNCT.com. You can also reach out to me with your story ideas on Facebook or over on Twitter. It's the most busiest time of the year for travel. Ahead on nine on the positive side, a visit to an airport in Oklahoma where something is catching people's eyes to make them stop and slow down for a bit. Airports all over are encouraging passengers to get there early this time of year. We all know how it goes. In addition to catching your flight, there's another good reason to do so. In this airport in Oklahoma, Colby Thielen shows us why we should bring a little bit extra cash if we ever went there and our best pair of shoes. In the chaos of holiday travel, it's nice to find some consistency and a little rest. Yeah. And across from gate 22, so many find both. Yeah. Spending time with Harold Smith. Shine and shoe. 36 years. Customers, too many to count. I like being with people. So I'm a people person. In this business, you gotta be nice to the customer, take care of the customer, and do good quality work. See, that's why he's back. Bill from Houston is back often. Three four times a year. You always see Harold? I do. Every time I'm here. Three to four times a year for the last 15 years. A little time out. <laughs> Travel sector. Glasses, please return and claim your glasses. Yeah, I, I like what I do, and I'm good at what I do. As you can tell, Harold calls it as he sees it. You gotta keep your shoes shining. You're like you need to shine. <laughs> and when it comes to shoes, man, <laughs> yeah, those shoes beat down, man. Harold's always right. Man, they're in bad shape, but I can bring them back. Skills learned from only one teacher: time. Time is the best. See, I'm a professional shoe shine. I'm a pro. So I keep it in the fairway. Keep it on the short grass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how life is. You gotta keep it down the middle. In a place where time is something few possess. See, see now you hook. <laughs> That's why I don't take the one shoe shine. Here, nearly four decades. I've been through about five airport directors. I last I last all of them. <laughs> I'm still kicking. Adding a little polish a little rest to the chaos of holiday travel. Yeah, sure did. To all those with six dollars <laughs> and a little time. Colby Thielen, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. A McDonald's worker in Arkansas is feeling the holiday cheer. It's all thanks to one of her customers. Ian Russell has this heartwarming story for us. There are some sounds just synonymous with the drive through And at this Caddo Valley McDonald's, no sound is as recognizable as this. You do the same. I appreciate you. Come back and see us. Aretha Nelson has been here for the better part of two decades, always greeting customers with a smile. I keep them going in the drive through I do. Rain or shine, always committed to her customers. If I made anybody day or touch anybody, I knew that I'd do my job. But this time, they're committed to her. She was told it was a video shoot for McDonald's marketing. Then it turned out to be the best Christmas gift she could have ever gotten. The real reason you are meeting with your work family here today. Aretha may have her work family in Caddo Valley, but her actual family lives hundreds of miles away in Virginia. She wore a mask with pictures of her grandkids on it during the pandemic, the closest she could be to them. I want to say I'm on four years now. It's been a minute. So an anonymous customer, only identified as one of Aretha's regulars, sent in a card for the holidays. <laughs> Not just to wish her well, <laughs> but to make sure those four years apart don't continue to grow. To spread love during the pandemic by sharing the smiles. Those grandbabies where you can see no smile. That's why she did this. And, you know, I was blown away. And I think that Aretha was blown away for sure. Aretha may never know who gave her the money, but that's okay. Because while she's used to her customers needing her, this time, all she needed was them. But I do have my ticket. So it is real. I'm going to get to see them grandbabies. So. In Caddo Valley, Ian Russell, THB 11 News. This is something I've had in my heart for years. 
The Secret Santa is on a mission. How he's brightening the holiday with giving. Time sure flies when you're having fun. I mean, hard to believe for more than 15 years running, CBS's Steve Hartman has been covering a mysterious secret Santa's mission of kindness. Take a look at last year's adventure. About as far from the North Pole as you can get, at the edge of the Sonoran Desert, Secret Santa is about to do some of his best work ever. This is something I've had in my heart for years. Here, on the San Carlos Apache tribal lands. Hi. I've always felt inside my soul a spiritual connection with the Native American. And so, after a blessing from the medicine man and a briefing for his elf recruits. Today you're on the front lines of kindness. This anonymous wealthy businessman set out to give away $30,000 in hundred dollar bills. Don't be scared. To random strangers. Merry Christmas to you. Oh my God. And boy, was it welcome. That's 400 secret Santa dollars. Thank you, Lord. Nearly half the people who live on this Arizona tribal land live below the poverty line. It's gonna put more food on the table, more for my family to eat. I had no food really. Elijah Cook says he knows hunger, not, not much, but still plans to give away his money. I think it goes to my father. He needs it more. This is for you. After getting her gift, Velma Wilson said she could finally get her grandchildren what they've been begging for. <laughs> Cat litter. <laughs> and yet, even here, I want to give you this. where the need is so great, Secret Santa says it's not about the money. It's never about the money. Oh my goodness. Whether you're Native American, African American, Christian American, Left American, Right American, kindness is that common language between us all. And maybe that's why most people didn't cry when they got their bills. But when he made them feel like a million bucks. Do you know how special you are? That's when the joy came. You are a beautiful spirit. That's when the tears rolled. You're an example to every mom. You're amazing. Nelvina Cobb got $400, but valued those comments much more. Just to hear that, it feels good. <laughs> it helped me a lot. This holiday season, few of us will have the resources to give like this. But Santa says we can all make an equal impact using our wealth of words. You're an incredible, incredible grandma. Thank you. Steve Hartman, on the road, <laughs> on the San Carlos Apache tribal lands. Such a beautiful thing to do. Thanks so much for joining us for Nine on the Positive Side. Happy holidays, everyone. Have a great weekend.